So I am here with Tom, who is our first successful kickstart entrepreneur from Makehaven. And I thought it would be nice for him just to explain a little bit about his product, the process that he went through as an inventor, and then some of the challenges and successes he had in the production phase. Cool. So um, here at Makehaven, I actually learned how to use a 3D printer. And my goal was to create a, uh, a multi-function, multi-tool that was small enough that you could take with you literally anywhere, airplanes, you know, travel, anything. And it went through a lot of iterations. I'd seen a whole bunch of other cool multi-tools that took the form of, you know, keys and things like that. And I thought, well, a coin is pretty cool. I uh, haven't seen one like that. And it is something that just about everyone carries just about everywhere. And what I did was I started by uh, making sketches and then using the 3D printer here at Makehaven to figure out things like sizing. So this is one of the first ones and it looked okay, but it's like, wow, this is really way too huge and way too thick. So then I thinned it down and said, oh, it's still too huge. This one's too small to get enough uh, purchase on with your fingers to get leverage to actually do anything. So this size is really where I wound up after you know, several prototypes. And then as you can tell over time, uh, the shape of it changed. I thought, oh, this kind of works, but it doesn't look cool. And okay, this looks cool and getting closer. And then um, at a particular point, actually, this is still plastic, um, switch over to some metal 3D printing uh, with Shapeways to you know figure out like what stress points and strength. Yeah. And, then, and for people that don't know, Shapeways, you mm -hmm. submit a design and they'll mail you back your exactly. 3D printed piece. Yeah, so you send in files and they like it's a, it's a great um, tool because they can work in different uh, materials as well. And they tell you, hey, you can't you can make this out of steel, but you can't make it out of porcelain um, unless you change X, Y, and Z. So it's it's a it's a great tool for, for going beyond. And this is you know essentially the the finished uh, product. This is what's on Kickstarter now. I've been up for about a week or so, and uh, you know it's the BAT, the the Batcoin Bring Anywhere tool, um, ten function multi tool, fits in your pocket, take it anywhere, and uh, yeah, pretty cool. So tell me a little bit about the. The 3D printing process, I think you're talking about the pros and the cons of the, the sintering metal printing. Yeah. Uh, and then how you took that same, same set of criteria and were able to go to production. Yeah. So for um, in looking for manufacturing, it was actually pretty difficult. I wound up uh, reaching out to probably 40 different domestic um, manufacturers, really trying to figure out what the process would be. Initially, I thought CNC would be the the perfect you know technique for this. You could just slap down a slab, and, you know, wait a little bit, and it, it'll route it out. And it turned out that was not going to happen at all for for cost and and some physical production um, you know reasons. Uh, as I was going through the three D printing process, including the metal three D prints from uh, Shapeways, I actually was pretty tempted to maybe make them do a production run as 3D printed metal. However, some of the drawbacks of that is it's not a solid slug of metal. It's not a solid piece. It's basically, a, a, it's, a, a, it's a powder that's um, more or less epoxy together. I'm sure I'm slaughtering you know, the, the real process, but that's essentially what it is. So it wouldn't necessarily be strong enough to be used as a hand tool, even though, I mean, like, you know, you can't break it by hand, but some of the things like the, the small cutting edge or the saw, you know, it just wouldn't get to be strong enough. And one of the main, you know, key tools on this are these, um, these toothed or, or serrated scoop and this other scoop, which is a fire starter, um, which you would use with, you know, a fire starter rod or one of these. And if you have a material that's not, you know, that's not hard, there you go. Uh, material that's not hard, then it's not going to make, it's not going to shoot sparks. So that kind of cut out um, 3D printing as a potential process, but uh, you know, explored just about every way that you can make it. And then, so uh, talk a little bit about the process you ended up with, and what what did they actually have to do when they make it? A lot. <laughs> they have to do a lot. So um, ultimately. 
I, I wound up uh, connecting with a company that has a, uh, a factory in California and they have a factory that's their own factory in China and they do different processes in each. But between those two, they had the whole gamut covered and they said, okay, well, this is how we can do, we can basically, you know, do some um, uh, die cast and, you know, have some molds, we'll create a slug. Then what we'll do is we'll uh, sandblast up, we'll, we'll plane it out, we'll polish it up, things like that. We'll send it out for wire EDM, which is the process for these teeth, which actually makes yeah. them, you know, Can you, for enough. people that don't know wire EDM, can you just briefly? Yeah, so, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a, think of it as almost like a solid laser. I think that would maybe be a, a way to, to, to phrase it, to... Uh, it's like a, it's a wire that's electrified it's a, almost. It's electrified that vaporizes. wire, yeah. yeah. And, and it's, it's almost like a plasma wire, um, and it, it can cut through just about anything. Um, including metal. So it's very precise, and that, um, that was required for this. And then some other secondary hand processes to, to grind out, uh, you know, the screwdriver, Phillips head, you know, modified Phillips and flat, and this uh, little yeah. cut, cutting-ish edge. So you have the slug, you have the EDM, yeah. then you have people physically grinding, grinding. out parts yeah. of this. L laser. Uh, and laser etching. Laser etching, yeah. So it's a, a, a sand, full sand set. A sandblast. A sandblast, yeah. yeah. So a lot of, a lot of different... Uh, a lot of different steps. And if I had thought about it all the way through in the beginning, I hopefully would have come up with a an easier way to do it. But um, but it was the product that I, I thought it had to be, so it was worth worth the effort. Yeah. And um, just what has your, been your experience with Kickstarter? What worked well? And yeah, Kickstarter is a great platform. Um, what was really important was to to start to build an audience up front. So for a few months prior to the launch, I had um, been building some Facebook audiences and, and a following and things like that. If you can get an email list, that's fantastic. Um, let people know, let people who you know know. Let people who you can get to know, who you think might be interested in this know. And um, you know, really it's that prep. Uh, things that took longer than I had expected were actually the, the creation of the page, just the actual writing. Um, it's one thing if you have a great idea and you've been living with it for a year and you fully understand it, but it's another thing to be able to explain it succinctly and to have a hook. Um, and you know, in in my day job, I do marketing and e-commerce, and I do a lot of work like this. But it was still challenging because you have to uh, you have to see it from the outside. But Kickstarter is great. I mean, I'd say. You know, the barrier to entry is pretty low, but you also want to make sure that you go through the process and you can fulfill the promises that you make, which is where I think a lot of um, Kickstarters fall apart. All right. Well, thanks, Tom, for talking with us, and I hope you inspire others to awesome. pursue their dreams. Just go for it. Just do it. It's not, you know, it, it, it's not that hard in the scheme of things. Just give it a shot.